working on the 2010 Audi A4 with the 2.0 turbo. Uh, we've got problems with uh, rough running, uh, random misfire codes, and did a previous uh, compression test. Those are the results. So cylinders one and two uh, have a, lot, a low compression. Uh, cylinder two is right at the cusp of not meeting minimum spec at all. Um, but we're going to do a leak down test to see if we can help figure out a little bit more if it's valve problem or where it's leaking from. There are timing marks on the crank pulley down there that I don't think I can show you on camera, but there's a little, a little arrow on the crank housing, and then there's some notches on the crank pulley that you line it up with. And then you want to verify that by making sure that the pistons out there at top dead center. So if those alignment marks at the bottom are lined up, this will be at top dead center on the compression stroke. And we'll take our fitting, air supply fitting, put it in the spark plug hole. Lots of threads. Okay, so for this particular leak down tester. Um, it's not the best. It's kind of a knockoff, but we want to get it calibrated to where it's starting at zero before we do any connection of the hose. So you got your air tank with supply air between, I think it was like 1600 PSI, and this thing will calibrate the um, detector between 20 and 30 PSI to get us into that zero. It's a little finicky. Gotta work through it. Okay, so we're pretty steady on that. Well, it's moving just a little bit. Okay. Now we'll connect the air, and this fitting actually kind of sucks. These brass fittings. See if we can get it with one hand if I need my other one. Nope. All right, so cylinder one's connected at top dead center. And it's showing that there really isn't any leakage. That 20% range is kind of normal as far as what's acceptable. And this one's showing like five. But what we want to do is just listen. I don't know if you can hear that. Out of the dipstick tube, there's air coming through there, so whatever leakage we do have is coming through there. You can hear a little bit through there, you know, past the rings, but that was actually reading pretty good, so. Alright, turn that thing off for a second. So, what we'll do now is rotate the crankshaft clockwise until we get to top dead center. Firing order is one three, four, two. So the very next uh, compression stroke up, the piston coming up with the crankshaft will be the compression stroke on cylinder three. So at this point, we'll stick the, let's see, and uh, get a longer one. I'll get it to where it's below the cylinder head or the cam cover. So we'll turn that one until that one's a top dead center compression stroke and that way we'll know we'll do the next test okay since i'm coming down here to turn the crank anyway you can see the two alignment marks on the crank pulley and then you can faintly see an arrow on the cover that's what you want lined up for top dead center on the number one piston so we're going to take our 24 millimeter ratchet and then we're going to Oh, the other note on here. I can find it. This fan relay switch component, whatever this thing is, uh, there's a seven millimeter bolt up, bolt up here that you need to remove and get this thing out of the way so that you can actually get your ratchet up in between here. Focus. Anyway, so you can turn the crank. All right, so ideally. It's easier to turn it from down below, um, but you can just 
barely get your arm maybe down in here and turn it a little bit at a time. And that way you can watch this come to the top and see when we reach top dead center on number three there. So I had my regular extension and then I added a little shorty extension with it. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep trying it here. It's hard to do this both. So I'm just gonna watch that till it pretty much stops one little crank at a time. Okay, so right there, I had moved the crank and that stopped moving, so we're gonna stop right there. And then we'll take our hose, put it down in there, and test it again. All right, so this is the reading for cylinder three right now, which it did have really high compression on its test. And when I pull the dip tube out of here, there's really no gurgling like it was in cylinder one. So that's interesting, it's the same amount of loss no air sound from here, but there was on cylinder one. And the other places you want to check, you want to check the throttle body, you want to check noises coming out of coolant, yeah, and then also the exhaust pipe, if you don't hear any noise back there. Okay, we got cylinder four around the top dead center. And we're just going to put in our hose again and run another test. All right, so here's cylinder four. Uh, hardly any air loss at all, which is nice to see that the valves seem to be doing their job. So I pull the dipstick, and this one, you can hear the air coming through it. Um, so that would be a ring issue but it's got super high compression on it. So we'll see, I mean, it's kind of normal to have a little bit of air blow by uh, in the crankcase, so I'm not too worried about that one, but we'll see what cylinder two does. All right, here's cylinder two, which had the lowest compression. We did a compression test on it. And it also, I mean, what is that? Seven PSI, something like that, 7% uh, loss, so the good news is, the valve seemed to be closing correctly. Um, still have to pull the motor, it seems, for the uh, piston ring problem. I didn't really hear any more noise. I uh, didn't really hear any more noise at any other locations when I was going around listening. So it seems like valves are in good condition, which is fantastic. Um, but we're going to have to pull the motor and probably do a new piston ring job on it. Uh, it's a re remanufactured motor. I'm not sure what they actually put in it. So the VIN does mean no good because uh, we don't know what actual motor this is. So I actually expect to see different results in that. But the good news is uh, we should be good on the valves.